The Tiger Tank is the very embodiment of armoured fear on the battlefield. A true heavily armoured beast with a weapon that could destroy even the heaviest tanks. And once its enemies fought it in battle, it would become the most iconic tank in history. But where did this all begin? Development of the Tiger began in 1941 after Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of Russia, where the Germans had faced the KB-1 and T-34 series of tanks which had been almost unstoppable to the lightly armed and armoured German tanks. So it was decided that a true heavy tank with immense firepower would be needed to counter this threat, but unlike previous heavy tanks of other nations, the Tiger was designed as a heavy breakthrough tank for punching through the enemy and annihilating all that stood before it. Luckily for the Germans, they had already been developing heavy tanks and component prototypes since as early as 1936, and this made a large amount of the Tiger's design already partially complete. But due to Germany's desperate need for such a tank, it was a rushed design which it meant it did have many mechanical flaws at the start. But by April 1942, the first Tigers were rolling off the production line, ready to face the enemy, and the Soviet Union could not imagine the combination of heavy armour, powerful main gun and mobility which would wreak havoc on their forces. When it came to armament, the Tiger was armed with an 8.8cm KWK 36L56 gun, the same weapon used as the Germans' main long-range flat gun. This 88mm main gun was a tried and tested weapon that had great range with amazing penetration, being able to penetrate up to 105mm of armour at a 30 degree slope at 1000 metres. Also combined with well-built German sights, it had a 100% accuracy rate when fired at 1000 metres, a truly amazing gun. Also due to its large calibre for a main gun, its high explosive rounds were more than capable of destroying fortified positions and annihilating infantry in the open or in cover, and even in the case of lighter vehicles, crippling the hull with its HE power. The Tiger also had a coaxial MG34 and a hull mounted MG34 to deal with infantry threats and suppress light enemy forces as the Tiger advanced. In addition to these weapons, the Tiger Up was also equipped with six 95mm diameter smoke grenade launchers for concealment. This began in June 1942, but was eventually dropped when it was reported that enemy gunfire would set the smoke launchers off. But in March 1944, a close defence weapon called the Navert Tiguswoff, also known as the S-Mine Launcher, was fitted, capable of firing a small explosive shell up to 10 metres that would detonate above ground to kill and disperse enemy troops that were trying to assault the tank at close range. The armour was where the Tiger was a huge step up for the Germans, as most German tanks of the time had a maximum of 50mm of armour, whereas the Tiger had heavy armour on all sides, which were as follows. Driver's plate 100mm thick at angled back at 9 degrees, 100mm thick nose plate at 25 degrees, 60mm glacis at 80 degrees, 80mm thick vertical upper hull sides, 60mm thick vertical lower hull sides, and a rear plate of 80mm thick at 9 degrees. Turret mantlet was 120mm thick, turret front was 100mm thick at 5 degrees, and the side and rears were 80mm at 0 degrees. The roof and belly plates were 25mm thick when, when they were then upgraded to 40mm thick later in the war. This meant the Tiger was heavily armoured on all sides, which suited its design as a breakthrough tank. It also meant that even if flanked on the sides or rear, the Tiger was still difficult to penetrate and could survive multiple hits and then respond with its massive 88mm main gun. The Tiger also used homogeneous armour, which is armour with a uniform hardness throughout the thickness, for the main armour plates instead of face hardened armour. This did mean it was more difficult to weld and build, but led to greater armour protection. The only drawback to the Tiger's armour was that it had very little slope to it, which meant the armour was normally being hit flat by AT weapons. The upside was without the sloping inside of the tank, meant it was very spacious for the crew and equipment, and meant that the crew could be very efficient in combat. To demonstrate the survivability of the Tiger's armour, I will read from a German tank crew's report. The combat group Sander had to face a very strong enemy when attacking the collective farm west of Sermin Ikova. The Tiger attacking advanced with the lighter tanks behind, and attracted all the enemy fire. The tank received hits on the front and to the right hand side. The enemy, with tanks, anti-tank guns and anti-tank rifles, opened fire at a great distance. My Tiger received a 7.62 cm hit on the front of the driver's position. The spare tracks links fixed there with an iron rod were ripped off. In the tank we noticed a bang and slight shaking. The nearer we came, the stronger the bangs and shaking from the 7.62 cm hits became. At the same time we noticed considerably high dust clouds from the artillery ground impacts near the tank. 
Further on, the crew noticed a somewhat lighter bang followed by a burst of yellow smoke, most likely a hit from an AT rifle. A short time later, we received a hit from a 4.5cm AT gun on the cupola. The brackets of the bulletproof glass were smashed. The glass vision block jammed and became opaque, caused by the heat of the explosion. A further hit destroyed the brackets and the hatch fell into the turret interior. There was a dense smoke in the fighting compartment and the area became very hot. The loader's hatch was jammed and stood slightly open and received a number of hits from AT rifles, demolishing the hinges and brackets. After the battle, two 4.5cm AT guns and 15 AT rifle hits were countered on the cupola. On both days of the attack, the enemy destroyed our machine guns. The smoke discharges on the turret were also destroyed. The smoke in the turret caused so much trouble that the Tigers were not ready for action for the same time. All crew members' nerves were frayed. We lost our sense of time. We felt neither hunger nor any other needs. Despite the fact that the attack lasted for more than six hours, all men in the tank felt the time had gone by in a flash. After a further 7.62cm hit on the mantlet, the gun mounting bolt sheared off. The recoil brake lost its fluid and the gun barrel remained in the rear recoil position. Due to electrical problems, the breech block could not be shut. Due to shocks inflicted by further hits, the radio system failed and the steering layers were jammed. When the exhaust cover was destroyed, the engine caught fire. This fire could be extinguished by the firefighting system. Further, it loosened some turret ring screws. The turret traversing system failed temporarily. We counted 227 hits by AT rifles, 14 hits by 5.7cm AT guns, and 11 hits by 7.62cm AT guns. The right suspension was heavily damaged by shelling. The connected pieces for several running wheels were ruined. Two torsion bars were broken, and a real idler wheel be bearing was damaged. In spite of this damage, the Tiger was able to be driven for a further 60 kilometers. The hit simply inflicted cracked some of the weld seams. A fuel tank began leaking due to heavy shock. We noticed a number of impacts on the track links, which however did not particularly impair mobility. Subsequently, it is said that the armor on the Tiger had come up to our expectations. This demonstrates how much punishment the Tiger could take, and within the ranges they were actually fighting from the report, these guns should have actually penetrated the tank's armor. It shows a fantastic build quality, and that even with heavy damage, the tire could still carry on to destroy the enemy and break through the lines. The mobility of the Tiger was impressive for such a heavy tank, with British trials of a captured Tiger achieving 21.5 miles per hour on road and 15 miles per hour off road. With the combination of heavy armour and armament, meant this was a nimble beast that could easily advance upon its foes, with very little they could do to stop it. The Tiger also had heavy duty suspension in the form of 55mm diameter torsion bars supplemented with hydraulic shock absorbers which gave the Tiger a very smooth ride for such a heavy tank and they were more than capable of handling off-road terrain. How did the Tiger fare on the battlefield though? Well its first deployment was in August 1942 in Russia. Four were deployed to see the performance. Unfortunately, the boggy ground was unsuited to the Tiger, causing it to sink into the ground, which made it vulnerable, but even with these setbacks, its armour and armament was a shock to the Russians, as nothing could compete in tank terms, and it easily punched through T-34s and KV tanks alike. By 1943, the many teething problems of the Tigers had been sorted out, and the Tiger began its kill spree against the Russian forces, inflicting huge losses on Russian armour. The first major use of the Tiger was Operation Citadel at Kursk, where a large concentration were used as a breakthrough force, but even with impressive kill rates, Kursk was a failure, and the German battle plan changed from offensive to defensive. The Tiger was now used as a response unit sent to the toughest parts of the front to hold back the Russian forces, which were now pushing the Germans back, and even though outnumbered, the Tigers were able to achieve a very good kill ratio of at least 10 to 1. Unfortunately, due to all the movement from one hotspot to the next, the Tigers began to suffer attrition due to the engines and other parts wearing out. The reports indicate it wasn't the Tiger's engineering that failed, but rather the lack of spare parts and proper maintenance facilities on the battlefield. The Tiger also took part in the North Africa campaign between 1942 and 1943, where they proved invaluable against British and American armour, causing huge casualties, but did face some opposition from the US M3 Lee tank and its 75mm gun, which could penetrate the Tiger, but only at very close ranges. But the Tigers were only sent in small numbers, and with the North Africa campaign turning sour, they could not change the tide of this battle. 
The British also captured a target intact, meaning the Allies now had the full information on the target and began to upgun and uparm their own tanks when they realised how far they were behind in the tank war. In Italy, the Tiger appeared once again as an elite armoured unit. Before they entered combat, they suffered many mechanical issues which severely impacted their effectiveness. Even with these setbacks, they were effective at knocking out Allied tanks after the initial landings. The Allied use of heavy artillery and naval battery fire proved too much for the Tiger, and when the Allied tanks failed to kill the Tigers, Allied artillery stepped in and were able to knock out and suppress the Tigers, so they became ineffective in this combat. On the Western Front, after the D-Day landings, the Tiger was part of the German forces attempting to push the Allies back into the sea. Here is where the Tiger truly became fear incarnate, as most Allied tanks didn't have the weaponry to effectively stop the Tiger, and when deployed in their full combat strength, they wreaked havoc on the Allied tanks. The Allied forces did attempt to change tactics using mobility and numbers to their advantage, and always attempting to outflank the Tiger. But with a well-trained crew and good positioning, the Tiger was almost unstoppable. But the Allied air forces began to suppress the Tiger and also limit their mobility on the battlefield, meaning the Tiger forces began to be pinned down and it limited their effectiveness. Even with Allied air and numerical superiority, the Tiger tank cases began to unleash their havoc, with the most famous being Michael Whitman and his ambush at Villa's Bockage where through his use of good tactics and a skilled crew, claimed 14 tanks, 15 APCs, 2 AT gun and countless lives. Events like this caused panic in the Allied tank crews and was a huge impact on future armoured doctrine and the push for heavy tanks such as the M26 Pershing. But as the Germans were being pushed back on all fronts, the defence of Germany began and the Tigers were always where the fighting was the thickest, with the Tigers seen fighting in the defence of Berlin right at the end. But by this stage of the war, the Allies had tanks such as the IS-2 and Sherman Firefly, which had the armament to knock out even the toughest German tanks, and all the Tiger could hope to do was to take as many Allied tanks out before itself was destroyed. I think we can all agree that the Tiger is probably the most iconic tank in history, and even though not perfect, it was a heavily armoured beast that could destroy anything it came against, and in the hands of a good crew was almost unstoppable. It was feared and admired by ally and enemy alike, and for a tank that was rushed through development, it showed the true skill of German engineering and was a massive inspiration on future tank designs for all nations, as it was proved that you could build a tank with speed, heavy armour and a powerful main gun. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and you guys have a fantastic evening.